So I'm Jeff, Jeff B Photography. I am Vice President of b and Vibe in Calgary and the Zoom Jedi for this session. Uh, so we're gonna have Russ Sodden speaking. Uh, Russ has been involved with b and for, in the UK for 19 years. Uh, first as a member and then as an executive director for the past nine years. Russ is the co-founder or co-executive director for b and in the Durham and Teesside area, or region in Northeast England. Uh, and is a member of the UK and Ireland director training team. He's worked on uh, many global projects for BNI, uh, such as BNI University, and more recently, the BNI rebranding project that we just learned lots about. Um, Russ was the first ever president of the Founders Circle and serves as a member of this group where he represents executive directors from around the world. Russ is a true giver, uh, having launched many Hall of Fame chapters in this region, as well as the first ever launched platinum chapter in the UK and Ireland. Uh, Russ wants to share his expertise with us today. All right, take it away. Thank you very much, Jeff. I've never been introduced by a Jedi before, so I do appreciate the time that you've put into that. Thank you. I'll share my screen and away we go, guys. Thank you very much for choosing to come along to this session. Um, what I'm gonna to cover today is finding drivers for launch. So if you're interested in launch, interest in launching what i'm not going to cover today guys is i'm not going to cover how to launch the fastest i'm not going to cover um that 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 that's for other people what i'm going to do is i'm going to cover how to launch a chapter that has a great culture without you having a breakdown in the middle of it so if you're interested in that topic then you're in the right room you recognize this story the tortoise and the hare We've all heard stories of people that launch chapters really fast, like super fast. And it seems to be like a race to who can launch the fastest chapter. And sometimes it's a race to who can have a chapter that disappears the quickest in that first year. Now, the thing with launching fast chapters is you sometimes don't cement the culture. As people come into the group, do they have time to actually be relational with the other people in the group? Now, I've got a confession to make. We're great at launching chapters in our region. We're great at it. We're that good that I'm on the UK and Ireland training team, pe training people how to do it. But we're certainly not the fastest. You know, our average launch time is months, not weeks. Um, the chapter we launched at 50 took a little under a year to launch. The, ch the two chapters I've launched that are Hall of Fame chapters, they took around nine months to launch. But that's not something I should be really proud of, guys. I'll be honest with you. But I tell you what, they're still here today. There are good numbers. The members of the group are my personal friends now. We do stuff together. And those that have left are still very keen alumni of B&I and pass people to us and refer members. And some of them have been back since they left. Now, the thing with launching is there's two ways to launch. One, you can be the tortoise. The tortoise is slow, careful, steady, but by goodness, it gets it launched. And it gets it launched with a great culture. Or you can be the hair. The hair is fast and boom, and it's launched on the next thing. Sometimes people that make really good hairs, and I say sometimes because there is an exception. Sometimes people that make really good hairs are the people that are always looking for the bright, shiny thing, the next thing that is the, the, the best thing to do for launch. Sometimes the tortoises are the thoughtful ones, the ones that take their time, the ones that don't accept every application that comes in. Now, the thing with launch is, this period is really, really important. That's the planning. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about today, because the planning is, is the time when you really have a dig deep to find out why you want to launch. What's your personal why? And the first thing that I do when I'm training director consultants and executive directors to launch in the UK, or the first thing I do when I'm um, working with teams in my own region with launch, is I get them to write down their why. So if you're on this call, on, the, on this conference, and you're in this session, and you are wanting some inspiration on launch, maybe you've launched before, and you just want to top up your skills. Maybe you've always fancied getting involved with the launch and bringing B&I to a new community and to new people, but you've not known where to start. You've not had that spark. Whatever your why is for being in this section, I'd really like you to write down your why on your notes for this conference or on the paper that you'll have in front of you, why do you want to launch? 
Now, you might be sat here thinking, I don't want to launch. There was no other breakout room that I wanted to be in. And that's fine. I'll add a bit of humor into it, as you can tell. But the key thing for you is you've got to write down the why you want to launch. And I'll give you a little bit of time to, to do that and have a little think about it. It could be because you want to create employment in your local area. It could be because it's a personal development thing. You'd really like to learn the skills that that, that brings with it. It might be you want the kudos of launching. You know, you want to be recognized and get that visibility for your own business as well. Um, launches win awards, right? So awards dinners in BNI, people that launch chapters, they're the quarterbacks in football. They're the, in, 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 we call it American football in the UK. They are the, um, the strikers in soccer. You know, they're the people that get the awards. Now, whatever your why, and, and the reason I wanted you to write down your why is... There's a spoiler alert here. There'll be times you wish you weren't doing it. There'll be times when you'll come away from a core group meeting and there were seven visitors going to turn up. Three of them cancelled the night before, two cancelled that morning, the other ones didn't turn up. Even worse, one of them turns up and they're just ticking a box. They've been in b and before and they're just helping a friend out. And you sit with your head in your hands and you think, what am I doing? That's when you look at that why, because you're not doing it for awards really you're doing it for you your own personal why and that's really important that you hold that dear and close to yourself but the planning stage is is great i love the planning stage in anything i do whether it's coming a conference presentation a really big meeting or launching or, or helping to grow the chapter but you do have to move to this stage and that's the start line because we'll all come across directors that get involved in launch and spend months launching. You know, the ones that go to the regional team meetings and say, oh yeah, 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 I'm, I'm gonna launch this chapter. It's gonna be this and it's gonna be that. And is it the next meeting? How are you getting on with that launch? Yep, still planning it. It's got six months later and that goes around in a heartbeat. And if you don't think time flies fast, where's the last year gone? <laughs> it's like, no, literally where has the last year gone? It's, it's been the year of pause. Now that start line, is where you need to get to as soon as possible. And getting to that start line, for me, is having your first founders. It's not the first time you sit down and have a coffee with somebody or get on a Zoom call with somebody to find out if they want to get involved and be one of the founders. And can you remember I showed you this picture, the hare and the tortoise? The tortoise takes the time at the beginning of the race, training. That planning phase there is when you're in training. It's the athlete in pre-season training. This is sure time. You've got your five founders, your six founders, your 10 founders, however many founders you're going to start with. But I like to start with five because any longer than that, and I start to churn my founders, the founders leave before I get to the start line. So you do have to have a date where you nominally are going to start the race. Now, at this stage, I'm just going to pause. And I'm going to tell you a story about somebody that did lots of research, lots of planning, but didn't get to the start line. This gentleman that you see here is a gentleman called John Walker. John Walker is a famous son of the town that I was born in, brought up in, living to this day. John Walker was a chemist. He was a pharmacist. And he's well known in our town and the northeast of England, but nowhere else for being the inventor of the friction match. If you look him up on Wikipedia, he'll be listed as the inventor of the friction match. But there are around the world. 30 different people that claim to be the inventor of the friction match. Every country seems to have its own inventor of the friction match. Now, we, obviously, because I am biased, truly believe that John Walker was the inventor of the friction match. But the thing with John Walker is he died in the poor house, in the workhouse. He died without a penny to his name. He put his successful pharmacy business on hold in Stockton on Tees, and he put everything, his passion, his everything into developing, manufacturing, and selling from his little pharmacist unit in Stockton Tees. And the shop is still there to this day, or the building is still there to this day. It, there isn't still a shop selling just friction matches. That wouldn't be very successful. But there is the building is still there to this day. There's a little plaque on the building. But John Walker isn't famous. You won't have heard of John Walker. And the reason John Walker wasn't famous is he didn't get to the start line. He didn't register the patents. He didn't find agents in different countries to sell this and, 
and have it manufactured and he didn't partner with or sell the idea because it was his idea and he never moved to the start line. How many people are there out there that have done that in history? There's loads of people that have done that in history. And what I don't want for you is for you to be that person. I want you to get to the start line. Now, one of the important things to remember before I get onto the main purpose of this presentation is, as well as you having a why, before you even talk to your first founder, you've got to have a mission and a vision for what the chapter is going to be. Now, in the UK and Ireland, as in my own region, we have a mantra that we train our launch directors with, and it's a mantra that we start with all of our chapters. And that is to be a chapter at the start line of 25 highly successful BNI members that are on their journey to sharing 5 million, it'd be pounds for us, maybe dollars for you, sharing $5 million of thanked invoice business between each other knowing that to achieve that, they're continuing on their journey to be 50 plus high performing members. So think about that broken down. It's 25 members at the start line. Now the start line isn't your start line, the start line is their start line when the chapter gets turned live and moves from being a core group to being a chapter. So the vision is very clear for all to see and I just deal in three numbers, 25, that's our launch number. For you, it might be 22, 20, 80, whatever it is. For me, I like to go for 25. So 25, sharing five million pounds of the business. And to do that, from our start line, we continue our journey of growth to be 50 plus high performing members. Now, I'm a huge fan of boxing. And I apologize to all of the Canadians here because one of our greatest heavyweights, Lennox Lewis, was born in Canada and fought for Great Britain at the Olympics. I apologize. But I saw an interview with Lennox Lewis once and somebody said, how's your punch so powerful? Because by goodness, there's lots more powerful punches today. But 30 years ago, 20 years ago, there wasn't. Lennox Lewis didn't punch somebody's nose. He punched the back of their head through their nose. He made sure that they felt punched. Now, when you launch a chapter, if you go, oh, we made it. We made it to 25. Well done, everybody. See you later. I'm off to launch my next chapter. What's the legacy? What's the vision? But if the message is consistent and handed to the leadership team when they launch, that we've launched this group at 25 on their journey to passing $5 million of business. And to do that, we know that we have to continue that journey to finding 50 plus high performing, engaged, contributing members. See, the messages that we use are really, really important. So you've got your why, you've got your vision and your mission for, for what you want to achieve and what you want to communicate. Now imagine if John Walker had done that, he probably wouldn't have died a poor man's death. He, he, he would have had a very successful business and been known around the world. But you need some founders to help you with that. So where do we find these founders? Where do we find founders? What kind of people do you find as high contributing founders that can help you get to your target, whether you're fast, slow, or in the middle. Well, the first people to look for are find larger businesses. Okay, now that can be your own definition. For me, what that means is, for my founders, certainly I'm not looking for, we call them in the UK, a man in a van. We're not looking for that sole trader. We're not looking for somebody who's bought themselves a job. We're looking for somebody that's wanting to build a business. Now, there may be a big business that isn't there yet in the same way that our group's going to be a group of 50 that are just not there yet. But these bigger business might be a construction company instead of a building company. It may be a finance company instead of a finance broker. But you're looking for a senior person in these businesses. For me, it would be in our region. We have a guy called Bill Scott. Bill Scott is the chief executive of the Wilton Group who are a subsea and mechanical engineering business. So they deal a lot with the North Sea and, and oil and that industry. And they turn over around about 150 million pounds a year. Now you might think, why would somebody like that be interested in joining BNI? Well, the answer might be he isn't, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to start with him because he moves in different circles to me. Now you might not know this about me, but I was a member of BNI, as Jeff mentioned at the beginning, for the best part of 10 years. And all that time I was a member of Florist. I know it's hard to believe I'm so much, 
But the thing with being a florist was you got to network up in the strangest situations. We did his daughter's wedding. He really liked the way that I did the, the wedding um, consultation. They bought into me, the vision of the shop, everything before they even knew the price. By goodness, if I'd known he was that wealthy, I may have charged more. But I didn't, and he respected me for doing that. I can pick the phone up to him now and ask him any question, we've become friends. So network up. Gary, I saw that you've got the Rotary banner behind you. You'll network with a whole different group of people in the Rotary as you will be and I. Some people are members of classic car clubs or uh, they play golf with people. Network up and find those bigger businesses because if they don't want to get involved in the group directly, they will certainly be able to help you find people that are in those bigger um, businesses that might just want to take a, a chance on BNI. The next group of people I look for are the business magnets. I hope I've picked the right country. I think this is your Shark Tank people from Canada. Now, the thing with finding business magnets, uh, we have a phrase in the northeast of England that is shy bands getting out. It means the shy kids get no sweets or no candy. And sometimes you do have to be cheeky. And if you have any business magnets in your area, like really well-known business people that get involved in media and open supermarkets and things, why not try and reach out for them, to them? Ask for an introduction. Because if you can turn them on to B&I, will it be easier to launch? Yeah, sure it will. What about your close contacts, your A-plus contacts? What about reaching out to them and um, just saying, I haven't seen you for a long time or I haven't caught up with you for a long time. Can we get on a Zoom call or can we meet up for a coffee when it's safe to do so? And sit down with them and say, listen, I need your help. If you have a friend that you would go for a coffee with that would not say yes to helping you if you ask them, go and have a coffee with somebody else. They're not your friend. They're a contact. Go and find some friends and sit down with them and say, I need your help. Think about what they do for a living. Think about their contacts and ask specifically. So let's say if they're, if they're a builder, you say, I need recommendations to five really good painter decorators. Can you help? And when they go, yeah, what about this one, this one, this one, this one, this one? You say, can I tell them that you recommended them? Use them as an A-plus contact. Reach out to these people. They've been recommended. They're probably going to be good as founders. Let's move on to the next one. What about your relationships? Your family? Your neighbours? The people that you've worked with that aren't quite friends, but they're contacts. Reach out to them. Same thing as your friends. Ask them if it can help you with introductions. And it, here's the thing. There's, there's a guy who used to have an IT company um, near us, and I, I just joined b and I, and uh, I kept going into his shop, and I said, Paul, can you, because that was his name, I said, Paul, can you help me introduce me maybe to an electrician? And he said, yes, I can introduce you to an electrician. No problem. Tell him I've sent you along. Three visitors that I had that became members in the b and I chapter that I joined and he phoned me up one day and he said, these people are phoning me up, thanking me for introducing them to you. Why are these people so chuffed to be introduced to the guy with the flower shop? And I went, well, I'm inviting them to B&I. And he went, can I come? The category had already filled for his category and I, I didn't invite him. So actually, don't be shy. Invite your key contacts along. The category is available. Why not put your friends in the room? Because he was angry with me for years that I didn't give him that opportunity. You didn't talk to me for years. We've known each other since we we're three years old. So that's about 18 years ago. And he didn't talk to me for three years. Just seeing if you were listening there, Kristen. We've then got use your team. Now think about the people that are in your existing BNI chapters. If you want an IT person um, in your group, or you want a CPA, or you want um, an architect, go to the successful larger architects, CPAs, so on and so forth in your chapters and accept them. I've got this really exciting group that we're launching. I want to do it because, then just read your why. And our aim is to be a group of 25 at launch, sharing on the journey, sharing $5 million between each other on our journey being 50 plus. You're gonna get buy-in from them. Do you have somebody in your, in your group that you want? I'm giving you, and I use this, I use this phrase. I respect you so much. I'm giving you the first refusal on this category, I do not want you to miss out. However, don't mistake enthusiasm for ability. On the left is Russ Sword and Superman. Dead enthusiastic, he'll tell you what you want to hear. 
The guy on the right is proper Superman. He doesn't just tell you what he wants you to hear and looks like a capital D side on. This guy's the real deal. Always, 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 whether they are founders, whether they are um, members of the core group, track their contribution and judge their actions, not their words. There's lots of us silver tongue devils out there. We'll tell you that we're the best thing since sliced bread. But if we don't bring visitors to that core group process, you've got to be able to deal with it. Now, I'm going to give you some notes to take away because you might think this is really easy to follow. Right, I can do this because I can now go out there and find my founders and I can get started. But how do I know if they're really a founder us if I'm judging their actions and not their words? Well, would it help you if I gave you five things you can ask them and talk to them about and identify if they're a founder or not? Give me a nod of your head if you think it would be. Please give me something back. Yes. So are you ready? Don't worry, I'll be displaying this twice. Number one, ask them, are they able to share why they're passionate about their business? If somebody sits there and goes, well, yeah, because what I wanted to do is have a business so that I can, I didn't like working from the ex-boss, to be honest, or I got made redundant, or I was sacked because I, I pushed them in front of a car, or whatever it might be, they're probably not even members, let alone founders. But if somebody says to you, I tell you why I started the business. I know it's a real gap in the market. People were just lighting fires with magnifying glasses. And I made this thing where I put some phosphor on the end of a stick and they could strike it against the friction board. And that became a friction match. And look at enthusiasm. Number two, because if they can't be enthusiastic, if they can't be enthusiastic about their own business, they ain't going to be enthusiastic about other people's businesses, are they? Number two, ask them, have you got a plan to grow your business? That's a really big question. Have you got a plan to grow your business? Because a lot of people at the moment are going, oh, I'm really busy, thanks. Well, if any, by the way, top tip, if anybody ever says to you, no, I don't want to, you want me to give up this thing I'm really busy at doing, take time out to come up this thing to make me busy. Sometimes it's hard to get visitors. In the UK, we can't get any trades at the moment. It's really hard. Until I say this to them, yeah, it sucks to be really busy. Would you like to be either as busy or less busy, but get lots of better business? That's really difficult for them to argue with, isn't it? Would you like to be less busy, but earn the same money? Why don't you come along and have a look at this idea? So always ask somebody where, you know, do you have a plan to grow your business and where do you want to be in the next year, in the next five years? They've got ambition that matches what you would see in a founder, get them signed up. Number three, do you need to increase your sales and marketing team to achieve your business goals? Now, I always tweak that a little bit and say, is it feasible that you may need to increase, um, increase your sales and marketing team to achieve your business goals? That's expensive to do that, isn't it? To take a salesperson on, that takes that out of your profits. Well, well having a large team of 50 plus people supporting you make you um, more able to achieve those goals within your five years. Who's going to say no to that? No, I don't think 50 um, free salespeople to me would be able to help me with that? Absolutely not. And does the idea of working with other successful business owners and um, through cooperation and collaboration sound attractive to you? These five questions are the things that I ask people to qualify them as a founder. So I'm going to speed up a little bit, guys, because we're heading towards the end of the presentation. Homework time. I'd like you to write down those three headings. Name, business category, contact details. And Russ Sorden's going to hold you accountable by the power of thought control that I want you to go away from this conference. And one of your action points from the conference is to find your founders using the method that you've learned in this. And write them down. Name, business category, and contact details. Brainstorm them. Before, before the end of today, before you go to sleep, brainstorm who you're going to catch up with after the conference. Try and find somebody to hold you accountable. Because you're not going to hold yourself accountable. Let's be Let's be honest, if I held myself accountable, I wouldn't be obese right now. I'd look amazing. I'd look like the Superman that was on the right-hand side instead of the one on the left-hand side. So, just to summarise, are you able to share why you're passionate about your business? Do you have a plan to grow your business? Where do you want to be in the next five years? Do you need to increase your sales and marketing team to achieve those goals? 
Well, having a large team of 50 plus people supporting you make you feel like you're able to achieve those goals more. And just the idea of working with other people like you, successful business owners, um, through co cooperation and collaboration, sound attractive to you. But finding founders and active members for core groups isn't easy. Neither start in one of these rusted roundabouts. Have you ever tried that? You know, you start thinking, oh, you get it going. But how easy is it when it's already going? You just have to give it a little nudge every now and again and keep that moving around. Do you know what's even quicker than that, guys? Getting five people pushing the roundabout with you and taking it in turns. Thank you very much. If we've got time, I'll take questions. Um, I know there's some things in the chat bar I can't quite read while I'm doing this. I don't know if Jeff's allowed to help me or if anybody wants to unmute or put the hand up, I'll stop sharing my screen so I can see you all, you amazing people. Rav got a question, sharing, pressure uh, reactions, put your hands open. Sorry, just Rav was copying and copying down uh, the questions so everyone could get them. Oh, bless you. Thank you very much, Jeff. You really are a Jedi. No, no, I said Rav was doing this. He was. Rav was doing it. Rav's a Jedi. You're clearly he a is. Sith. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> a bit of a Star Wars joke for anybody that's, that likes Star Wars. Does anybody have any questions? We've got four minutes. No? Um, I I, I do have a comment that uh, I am uh, certainly in the process of launching a new team in Calgary. And uh, what we're looking for as members, and I hope I'm on the right track, is people who already align with the giver's gain philosophy. Uh, when you hear somebody say, uh, you know, you're asking for a time commitment. I joined BNI in April 20th of 2017. It has not added one hour, one minute of time to what I normally did, it, because that is how I did my business. And I think the mistake that uh, we make is to get a pulse, somebody who fogs the mirror, not somebody who aligns with our values. And I that's a really good point, that. Gary. Even, even for a Chelsea fan, that's a good point. The, <laughs> see, see, <laughs> see, I, I like this intimacy where we get to know the football teams of the people that are on the call. It's brilliant. See, the thing with that, Gary, is imagine how powerful it would be if every time we interviewed somebody to join a chapter or a core group, we sat down with the seven core values and said, what do you think of these? And we just watched their excitement and their acceptance of them. Because if you think about the people that you lose from your chapters and your core groups or the people you do, if we showed them then, they'd go, yeah, lifelong learning. You know, they, they wouldn't be happy with them at all, would they? That's a really good point, Gary. I a note of it so I can plagiarise it and use it in a future presentation. I mean, I'll give you credit for the first time, but after that, it's mine. <laughs> got time for another question, if anyone's got a question. Kristen, hello. Hi. I have a question based on um, when I'm launching, I feel that the, um, the applicants or the founders that want to make me look for everybody. So... Um, Based on the, what you've just taught us, it's kind of like I should be still brainstorming and trying to help, but how do you get around that expectation that they think I should grow the chapter? Find the right founders. I would suggest that you don't have the right founders. I would suggest that it's absolutely 100% your job to find those founders and then work with them to find the rest of the people in the group. Now, remember the analogy at the end with the roundabout? Every now and again, you've got to give it a nudge. So every now and again, send a visitor along. But what I've got to say, Kristen, is whenever I take a visitor along to one of our core groups, I give it to the person that has brought visitors and is maybe having a rough time or is struggling. I don't give it to the one that's not trying. That would be silly. you know. But I, I'm, I don't need that credit. We can all be leaders without a title. Does that help? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we're at the top of the hour, guys. Thank you very much for coming in on this session. If you've enjoyed it, my name's Russell, and if you haven't, my name's Jeff Borchard. <laughs>